Coca-Cola. Hello friends. Probably every one of you has seen this video. We see legend footballer Cristiano Ronaldo keep aside the Coca-Cola bottle during the press conference and urging people to drink water. This has resulted in a dollar 4 billion fall in the market capitalization of the beverage giant. It had a huge impact on Coca-Cola. Cristiano Ronaldo has been famous for two reasons other than football. He is an open advocate for human rights, especially Palestinian rights. He has been part of many charities for the kids of Syria and Palestine. He has donated millions of his earnings for those in need. Taking this opportunity, I would like to keep in front of you the story of Coca-Cola in India, war between Coca-Cola and socialism and the ill effects of Coca-Cola. I am Nihal Mohammed and you are watching The Upfront. Coca-Cola is today one of the world's biggest soft drink brands. Coca-Cola was invented on 8 May 1886 in Atlanta, Georgia by Dr. Pemberton. His first customers were the customers at his local chemist where it became very popular and was soon sold at 5 cents a glass. It was his friend and business partner Frank M. Robinson who came up with the name Coca-Cola. In 1950, Coca-Cola marked its entry in India with the opening of the first bottling plant by Pure Drinks Limited in New Delhi. The company exited the country in 1977 due to the implementation of India's Foreign Exchange Act. This act required all foreign companies or branches to bring down the foreign equity share to 40% or less. The subsequent announcement of the emergency made the situation worse for Coca-Cola. The socialist attitude of then Indian government made it very difficult for Coca-Cola to continue in India without revealing its secret recipe. The government had also introduced its own cola drink by the name Double Seven to mark the year in which the emergency was revoked by Indira Gandhi. After the 1991 Indian economic crisis that resulted from poor economic policies and the resulting trade deficits, India changed its socialist economic policy and went towards globalization. Towards the end of 1992, Coca-Cola returned to India after the opening up of the Indian economy to foreign investments in 1991. On October 24, 1993, the Coca-Cola company formally began its operations in India with the opening of a production facility outside of Agra. Over the course of time, Coca-Cola faced competition from many other local brands also. Major among them was Parley. In 1993, Coca-Cola acquired brands like Thumbs Up, Limca, Gold Spot and Maza from Parley Bistlery. They discontinued these drinks but were later forced to bring them back due to consumer demand. Of these drinks, only Gold Spot is not seen in Indian market today. So this was a brief history of one of the most famous soft drinks in the world, Coca-Cola in India. Now let's move on to the next part, ill effects of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola holds the tagline open happiness, but in reality, it has been closing happiness by providing us with high fructose corn syrup, which is highly destructive to human health. It may be spreading diabetes, it may be spreading obesity, but definitely not happiness. High fructose corn syrup is common sweetener in sodas and fruit flavored drinks. As use of high fructose corn syrup has increased, so have levels of obesity and related health problems. Some wonder if there is a connection. What's cola? Poison water. Too much added sugar of all kinds, not just high fructose corn syrup, can contribute unwanted calories that are linked to health problems such as weight gain, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome and high triglyceride levels. All of these boost your risk of heart diseases. Many experts believe that added sugar and HFCS are the key factors in today's obesity epidemic. Here are five reasons why consuming large amounts of high fructose corn syrup is bad for your health. Adds an unnatural amount of fructose to your diet. High intake of fructose leads to increased liver fat. Increases your risk of obesity and weight gain. Excessive intake is linked to diabetes. In addition to diabetes, 
HFCS may play a role in metabolic syndrome which has been linked to many diseases including heart disease and certain cancers. Contains no essential nutrients. Like other added sugars, high fructose corn syrup is empty calories. While it contains plenty of calories, it offers no essential nutrients. Thus eating HFCS will decrease the total nutrient content of your diet as the more HFCS you consume, the less room you have for nutrient dense foods. So this was about the health problems that Coca-Cola causes us. There are many other problems that Coca-Cola has on our society and on our environment. Another major problem is that Coca-Cola has been accused of dehydrating communities in its pursuit of water resources to feed its own plants, drying up farmers' wells and destroying local agriculture. Coca-Cola admits that without water, it would have no business at all. Coca-Cola's operations rely on access to vast supplies of water as it takes almost 3 litres of water to make 1 litre of Coca-Cola. In order to satisfy this need, Coca-Cola is increasingly taking over control of aquifers in communities around the world. These vast subterranean chambers hold water resources collected over many hundreds of years. As such, they represent the heritage of entire communities. Coca-Cola's operations have been particularly blamed for exacerbating water shortages in regions that suffer from a lack of water resources and rainfall. No way has this been better documented than in India, where there are now community campaigns against the company in several states. Research carried out by War on Want in the Indian states of Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh affirms the findings from Kerala and Maharashtra that Coca-Cola's activities are having a serious negative impact on farmers and local communities. Coca-Cola established a bottling plant in the village of Kaladera in Rajasthan at the end of 1999. Rajasthan is well known as a desert state and Kaladera is a small impoverished village characterized by semi-arid conditions. Farmers rely on access to groundwater for the cultivation of their crops. But since Coca-Cola's arrival, they have been confronted with a serious decline in water levels. Locals are increasingly unable to irrigate their lands and sustain their crops, putting whole families at risk of losing their livelihoods. Local villagers testify that Coca-Cola's arrival exacerbated an already precarious situation. Official documents from the government's water ministry show that Water levels remained stable from 1995 until 2000 when the Coca-Cola plant became operational. Water levels then dropped by almost 10 meters over the following 5 years. Locals fear Kaladera could become a dark zone, the term used to describe areas that are abandoned due to depleted water resources. Other communities in India that live and work around Coca-Cola's bottling plants are experiencing severe shortages as well as environmental damage. Local villagers near the holy city of Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh complain that the company's over-exploitation of water resources has taken a heavy toll on their harvests and led to the drying up of wells. As in Rajasthan and Kerala, Villagers have held protests against the local Coca-Cola plant for its appropriation of valuable water resources. In the now infamous case of Plachimada in southern state of Kerala, Coca-Cola's plant was forced to close down in March 2004 after the village council refused to renew the company's license on the grounds that it had overused and contaminated local water resources. Kerala High Court had also ruled that Coca-Cola's heavy extraction from the common groundwater resource was illegal and ordered it to seek alternative sources for its production. We find a scene in the movie Halal Love Story where an actor is required to drink alcohol in a scene. Actor being a Muslim is prohibited from drinking alcohol due to religious reasons. Next, the actor is offered Coca-Cola. Again, the actor refuses it. When asked for the reason, he said, it is a political stance we have taken. Later, he was offered black tea. This highlights the protest held by the people of Kerala against Coca-Cola. Groundwater isn't the only issue. The Central Pollution Control Board of India found in 2003 that sludge from Coca-Cola's Uttar Pradesh factory was contaminated with high levels of cadmium, lead and chromium. To make matters worse, 
Coca-Cola was offloading cadmium laden waste sludge as free fertilizer to tribal farmers who live near the plant prompting questions as to why they would do that but not provide clean water to local residents whose underground supplies were being stolen another indian non-profit group the center for science and environment says it tested 57 carbonated beverages made by coca-cola and pepsi at 25 bottling plants and found a cocktail of between three to five different pesticides in all samples CSE director Sunita Narayan, the winner of the 2005 Stockholm Water Prize, described the group's findings as a grave public health scandal. In February 2004, Indian MPs who investigated CSE's studies upheld these findings and the parliament went on to ban Coca-Cola from its cafeterias. Drinking Coke is like drinking farmer's blood in India, said protest organizer Nandlal Master. Coca-Cola is creating thirst in India and is directly responsible for the loss of livelihood and even hunger for thousands of people across India, added Master, who represents the India Resource Center in the campaign against Coca-Cola. Indeed, one report in the daily newspaper Madhrabhumi described local women having to travel 5 kilometers to obtain drinkable water during which time soft drinks would come out of the coca-cola plant by the truckload. Times are changing. Maybe in the near future the younger generation will start speaking out against coca-cola and the large impact it has on our body and on our environment. What we see as normal today might be seen as abnormal and immoral 10 years from now. In the next few years, probably investing in Coca-Cola would be as horrible as investing in tobacco. Taking sponsorship money from Coca-Cola may be considered as bad as taking money from any tobacco company. People will come out of this fake hype created by Coca-Cola using huge marketing and fake punchlines. Let us hope that this step taken by Cristiano Ronaldo will prove to be the changing point in world history. Let us be a part of the change. It is for us to decide whether we want to consume Coca-Cola or not. It is for us to decide whether we want to sell Coca-Cola or not. It is for you to decide on whether you want to be at the leading edge of humanity's evolution or at the backward point. If you like the content we provide, please subscribe to the Upfront and press the bell icon to get notification of all our recent updates. Please share our videos and educate others. Thank you.